It's time for provocative and entertaining discussions. For real talk and dope conversation. I've been waiting for this all day. The Talk My Credo Podcast. Get ready for the Talk My Credo Podcast. Now, here's your host, Dante Credo. Credo. Hey, yo, yo, what is up, everybody? We are back in this thing. Welcome to another episode of the Talk My Credo Podcast. I'm your boy, Dante, here with my fam in the building. Welcome. This is the new season, episode 151. My man, P. Shaw is here. My man, Nasuru is here. Gentlemen, gentlemen, it is so good to see y'all, man. I missed y'all. It ain't been that long, but still, I missed y'all. Now, I want it. I wanted to give y'all a longer time off. I was I was talking to P. Shaw. I hit the group like, listen, I was thinking about like February, January. Let's just boosa, do what y'all need to do. Life continues to be life in. But 2024 started off with some crazy stuff. And I was like, you know what? Okay, two weeks. All right, two weeks. And that's how like, so, hey, we got we got work to do and we right back in it. Also, still proverbial middle fingers to those who shall not be named. Still stomping you niggas out because that's just yet another one in the clip that y'all haven't done yet. Still, I check before I hit record. I promise you, I still did it. I still did it. And, and from here on out, understand we're going to get smaller and smaller in y'all view because we leaving y'all. And that's the other people because, you know, some of y'all, we're going to be. See, I'm trying to get away from this pause thing. Like this, this is my new, my new personal challenge, but you know, we, we're going to be in other people's rear views. I'm just going to put it that way, you know, cause we, 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 we move it. We move it. Yo, gentlemen, what is going on? How was your holiday? It was Christmas. It was new year's. It's about to be Martin Luther King up in there. So what's, what's going on? How was your holidays? Look, let me tell you something. First of all, I want to tell y'all, you know, happy new year. You know, God is good. God is great, of course. It's good to be seen and not viewed. I think one thing that you always say, Dante, is check on your strong friends. So, like, um, during the holiday time, I lost I lost some I lost some people during the holiday time, you know. Um yes. twenty five yes. years. You know, so I mean, you know, stuff can't can't never be understood. You know, you can always say I can relate to you. But when you start thinking about those times where you're checking on this person, checking on this person, and all of a sudden they're gone. And um, a lot of people don't know the value of what real friends. That's why I always call you my Proverbs seventeen seventeen friend. And um, when you understand the the capacity of what it takes to really be genuine, you know it's needed. And um, you, you got to know how to separate it. You know, relatives and family, just like classmates and friends. And evidence of that is, I right, you know you had some classmates you thought you was friends with till you find out they had a whole wedding and everybody was there with you. <laughs> yep. So, you know, <laughs> yep. I, I had me thinking like, wow, you know, should I make a, a um, invitation list to my funeral? I don't know when it'll be and I and I won't be there, but, you know, I can I'll be there in the in the body. But should I make a a, a list until Dante check the door? You know, don't they can't come in, you know, type stuff, because a lot of people will do that. They'll say I just talked to them last week, not knowing that you weren't even in you weren't even responsive a week ago. But um, but I'm thankful to, uh, to live to see another year. I'm thankful you got to see another birthday. We talked about that on the other pod um, before coming into this this season. But uh, you know, you know, I, I'm just blessed. You know, I'm old. You're so you're so short and spiritual. You're like this brown Tom Cruise that I just met from North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> Love him. So cool. You're so cool. Yeah, just keep being cool. Just yes. Yes. We do. It's we it's do it's the balance. It's 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 the balance. You know. <laughs> so so since my guy P Shaw told you about his weekend, I'm going to go ahead and tell you about MLK Day. So here's the thing. This year, I want people to do something different. This year, realistically, it's going to always be a crying shame that this man was assassinated. The man just wanted America to be a diverse place like it was supposed to. to written by our quote-unquote forefathers of this country, right? Uh-huh. They just didn't expect it to look like this. You know, they were just like, yeah, bring all the weak and tired of, you know, the Ukrainians and all the other white Europeans. I'm just being funny, but <laughs> yes, but true. true. But now, here's the thing. 
even though we're going to always celebrate that, celebrate that dream, that even though it's a long haul, it has been coming into fruition, just not the fruition that would make me feel satisfied, but I see progress, right? But still, I think things could have been done way faster and much better. I think that it's time because we are in this different election year where we have to respect. Well, not super, I say respect because I, I, I don't want to disrespect this man. This man is awesome. It's okay. Everybody sometimes when you can make a decision and that decision may not go right. That doesn't mean that this person is a bad leader. Right. Sometimes in a business, like let's say I'm a boss and you my employees, P. Shaw and Dante. And let's say I ask you guys to manage the floor. And one person didn't do no type of managing. And one person did managing but didn't do it well. They just gave a great effort. Guess who I'm going to give some more compensation to? The one that gave me effort because the other one didn't do nothing at all. Right. So I'm not going to disrespect MLK at all. But it's time to realize and wake up. What had the Democratic Party done for you? Martin did that because he believed to white, white Democrats, white liberal Democrats, that they were going to take care of the black American situation. They have not. Nope. And we are now in this perpetual everyday sequence of the Democrats got us, the Democrats got us, the Democrats got us. And yes, we have grown in certain areas, but that is no part to our own because that's what they said can happen if we do things on our own. So yes, we don't, for, to white America, I'm not saying thank you or no thank you. Is we earned that, right? So, what have you done for Black America in 2024 in these last 25 to 27 years? This is where we got to just start looking at it from that aspect. Thank you, MLK. You still done a wonderful job. It's just saying when are we ready to take our suitcases and just create our own political party? I apologize for being that type of winded, but I just wanted that, that had to be said. No, because it's absolutely true, because now he, here is what we've been deceived and waiting on. We think, as you mentioned, the Democrat, now Malcolm X, came back and said now that they portray themselves as the fox. And we talk about that all the time, foxes and wolves, you know, and because they speak the language, because they present themselves friendly, they'd be like, you can get what it is that you want after you do what we want you to do. And that's basically the deception that we have. We can talk about racism. We can do all these things. Oh, a BLM. Sure. Just, you know, all of these, you know, talking points, basically we can talk about it. Sure. Vote for us and we can talk about it. But the moment Joe Biden got up in that office, he set that black caucus down and said, we'll get to you when we get to you. And that was three years ago. And he has yet to get to the Black Caucus because they have yet continued to still be sat up in that corner like sad little puppies waiting for attention. But it's exactly as you mentioned, yo, when are we going to understand that we don't need another Martin Luther King? We don't need another Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, Huey Newton, because now we literally can do it ourselves. We don't need one Martin Luther King. Everybody now has the ability. We have the information. I keep doing this all the time and I'll continue to do it. What you have in your hands gives you the absolute power to be that next one. And we can do this as a community. But on one side, the Republican side, they want you to focus so much on individualism and ignore the community because it's not about that. It's not about that, but th they've been afforded that luxury of being seen as individuals. We haven't yet, but the other side, the Democrats is saying, yeah, you are a black community, but we just need y'all to vote for us so we can stop those nasty Republicans. And then once they quote unquote, stop those nasty Republicans. All right, well, we'll see you guys in four more years, you know, and we can do this with a little bit of both. I always say both both sides, they're half right at best. And as far as the black community, we don't belong to either side. And I just I just love that energy because I, I feel like that 2024 is the tone has been set, in my opinion, for 2024. I think Cat Williams 
set the tone for, for 2024. Just, I don't care what it is. I don't care who it is. Like it, love it, leave it, whatever the case may be. I'm going to say what it is. And when it comes to politics, this is a very interesting time because right now they don't know what black people is going to do. And I love it. I love it. Democrats are absolutely afraid because they just don't know what we're going to do. And because finally we're like, you know what? Do we really need you? Do we really need you? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think there's a couple more things that needs to happen for things to really be like Nas mentioned. It has, it's not happening as fast as I would like to see it because honestly, it's really just a decision. I decided this is what's going to happen from here on out. Just a decision that now when I look at you, my black woman, my black man, now I'm going to intentionally treat you with value because now you are my brother. You are my sister. And all that crazy anti-black man, anti-black woman, this civil war we got going on with one another, all these crazy topics and stuff. Oh, is it 50-50? Is it, you know, you pay all the bills? Is it who's the alpha? Who with it? That All that crazy stuff that y'all been going on from the last three years, it goes away because now I am literally going to treat you with intent that you are valuable to me because we are in this literally together. I got my own race to run, sure, but I'm running my race for my squad, and it's our side over their side. Now, you you apologize for being a little long way, then I just like went all the way out there. All right, so <laughs> so so it's all good. All right, listen, I, I wanted to I wanted to say I'm disappointed. I'm, I'm disappointed because I I saw the Dave Chappelle thing. Well, I listened to it. Um, I didn't necessarily watch it, so this this probably why I'm not. Maybe if I watch it then I probably have a different understanding, but I, I listened to it and I just wasn't, you know, I, I had a few laughs, a few laughs, but normally with a Dave Chappelle thing, it's like, yo, this dude is crazy. It's absolutely hilarious, but I don't know. It, he released that special, the dreamer. And I just wasn't, I, I just wasn't wild. I was like, Oh, okay. All right. That's, that's cool. Like did, did anybody else have a different opinion? No, no, allow me, allow me to, uh, uh... <laughs> let me let me take this. Let me take the word. Okay. Let me All right. What's the word. Word. I don't know. You see, ISO. Send ISO. Send, yeah. yeah. Hold, give me only the ISO. You know that's that's okay. not nice. You know, wait, wait, just wait in the corner. I'm, I might I might pass right. it to you. Okay. All right. I'm ready. Spot <laughs> it. <laughs> there you go. There you yep. go. No, no. So look, you know what? Because I I saw in the outline real fast. You know, we're gonna make this conversational. So I saw it in the out. I saw in the outline. You were saying, uh, did the you know is he going too far with the trans jokes? Here's what I want to say. Remember when we did that episode about the closer? Yep. And we both made a comment. Of course, we made it in our own different perspective, but we both agreed that the trans jokes in that uh, in that comedy special was very long winded. He spent about 27 to 30 minutes on transgender jokes. Mm -hmm. And although they were well crafted and also moving and touching when he talked about the, the foundation that he put together for the one uh, trans person that uh, passed away. People still wanted to attack. And, you know, for whatever reason, we're not going to get to that political stuff. That's I'm not I'm not in, in this conversation for that. So what I did appreciate in this one is that, in my opinion, on my perspective about the closer, I said, man, if he would have just made those those trans jokes shorter and not take up so much time, it would win if he wanted to do that. In this case, he did do that. Like, yo, I don't know if y'all. The beginning joke about how he wanted to meet Jim Carrey and he met Jim Carrey on the set of Man on the Moon and he had mm -hmm. to had to deal with Andy Kaufman, even though there was Jim Carrey the whole time and then just ended it by saying, that's the way trans people make me feel. Come on. Right. Like that right. was genius. That was funny. Right. That was that that was funny. He, that was funny. he is showing you that he is the greatest storyteller right now in comedy. No conversation. And he didn't get long winded like he did with that joke with any other trans joke he did. He would just hit you with a quick zinger in and out. Now, hopefully he would now, cause in my opinion on a human, on a human, uh, a human error, in my opinion, when you, that type of level of perfectionist, you're like, you know what? I want to get back on the stage and do it the better way. And I think in his mind, this was the better way. 
Like I'm going to shorten up the trans jokes, but I'm not going to be scared of that because as a comedian, I want to say whatever it is that I want to say. And then um, I, I think I think it was a really good special. It's not the best one that he put together because I think the other the, the B side of the comedy special where he was just talking about the dreaming and the story. And then again, he ended it with little Nas X. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. If you're someone that isn't in agreement to the gay community, you may not like what he said. But there's a lot of people that not saying that they disagree with the gay community is, yo, what the what is the position that they're making the black man in America look like? Like, are we going to be strong or are we going to be strong yet feminine? And I don't think no black man wants to be in a position of being strong yet feminine. We just rather be strong. But then there's some feminine men that's like, well, what's wrong with? And it's like, oh, whoa, whoa, hey, 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 hey. What was that? Cool, but you sit on the bench. What was that? What's the, we don't do that. So it's it's a it's a struggle now because I thought the little Nas X joke was it was I thought it was real, like yes. it was more of and this is how I look at when he said these trans jokes, even with the handicap jokes, is these good people exist. That's it. Right. They exist. Right. So you want to get these jokes? Like yo, I'm five six. Like I don't I don't like people when they talk about my height. But listen, I'm, it's open season. It's going to happen. You know what yeah. I mean? What can yeah. I do? What can I do? So I think it was a very good special. I mean, I hate to use the word very. It was it was really good, in my opinion. It wasn't mm -hmm. his best. I think it was better than the closure. Closure. I think it was definitely a redeemer from the closure. And you know you're going to get a couple more by the way he ended it off. It wasn't, it was just more of like a celebration of killing them softly. I think he did a great job. And yes. yeah, man, he he yo. Dave, Dave Chappelle is on another level right now. The greatest storyteller oh, in our time. Absolutely. Th that's yeah, what I yeah. got from it, though. Like, uh, I I understood as far as the setting. And then when he mentioned, like, you know, this is where I did Killing Them Soft. Like, this is Killing Them. And then my mind just went there. And I just, it just took my mind back to when I first saw Killing Them Softly. I was at the house. We were uh, watching on a computer. And me and the homies, like, P, you weren't there, but the, the other dudes from the neighborhood, and we was watching right there in the room, and, and we were just dying laughing. Like, yo, but it, it, that was my introduction to, to Dave Chappelle, and I was just a fan ever since. But um, I'm, I'm going to have to do it justice, where I'm going to have to actually watch it, because I was doing other things while it was playing. So I, I really didn't give it, like, that much. So, and, and I also know that he has... You know, facial expressions, physical cues, things that he does demonstratively right. that will drive that joke home. So I'll I'll, I'll give it uh, a good look. Um, I told wifey that I wouldn't watch it without her, and I technically well, thing, I didn't watch it without. Yeah, her. see, yeah. see what the thing is. Just like now, I said how he was in and out, in and out. Um, the last joke he did about trans, I felt like was 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 smart too because. He was basically saying that, you know, to you have to be strong. He said, and y'all never meet a strong man the way he has to be and confident the way a trans man would be. And I was like, what? He, he, you know, I, I feel him on that one because you have to be a different type of person to say, this is me. This is my light. You know what I mean? And this is the Talk My Kudo podcast. We're not saying whether or not um, that is right or wrong, but that's you. But um, he, he, even in that sense, you know, you know, I know people that do that stuff. They don't do it in front of me. I never been tried a day in my life, you know, and I, I just look at it like, hey, that's you, do you. But I agree with some of the people and the way they feel. And I feel like, you know, Dave Chappelle, he, he's very adamant and I believe factual. He's been tried too many times. So being tried too many times, he has to tell yeah. a story. And, and he actually letting you know I'm a victim of being tricked. And, uh, you know, we laugh about it, but it happens when you go into the city. It happens when you go, it, it happens when you go into the big city and the light is dim and you've been drinking. And he's like, wow. And Dave Spell said, hey, well, you know, might as well do another dance. I mean, why, why cut it short? But then he said the next morning, <laughs> you know, after I was making breakfast and stuff, you know, it's just silly stuff like that that I can, um, yeah. you know, I appreciate. And Nas, I, I agree with you. Being able to tell those stories the way he tell them, you know, he ain't lying about it. Because who's going to tell a lie about waking up with a trans person? You know what I mean? Ain't nobody lying about that, miss. <laughs> Ain't nobody lying. I, but, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a, a better better thing. But I always feel like even then, I know there's still, with all the laughs and jokes and the quote-unquote controversial stance, there's always a message in it. 
Like there's a message in it. Right. And you know, the, the message, you know, I, I think is always, that message always gets overlooked. It always gets overlooked for, for this. And I only pose the question as far as, you know, you know the trans joke that going too far. Cause that was what, like the main criticism, but then it's like, I, I don't think it was that again, like the closer, but again, people hear what they want to hear and they want to criticize what they want to criticize. So people um, are people. We, we live in a world, especially black America. I, I, no disrespect white America. I'm just talking about the, we know when uh, black Americans say this person is hot, America starts saying this is hot. And yeah. my thing is with this. Black America, and this is just my personal opinion. They are more into Mike Epps, Cat Williams, Martin Lawrence, mm. not Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle is a comedian that makes you think. And I think. And it's not about us. Like, I don't want this to be about us. I'm just saying that I think that we just prefer the silly. We prefer mm -hmm. the theatrics and the slapstick. We don't prefer the mind games. For me, I'm like, yo, now nah, give me the mind games. I like what Chappelle got going on right here. This is fire. But I have never met a woman that told me. I, always, I love to ask women on my first date, like, yo, who's your favorite comedian? Who you like? It'd always be Martin. It'd always be Mike Epps. Always be Cat Williams. And that's fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But it, with, with everything that you just alluded to, Dante, this is why. is We like this style of comedy. Dave Chappelle make us think too much. Who we think he is? Louis C.K.? I think that's an issue. Uh-huh. I, I, I had to be a little um, sidetracked because I, I, I got this battle. On yeah. the 20th, right? Okay. And uh, apparently the guy, I guess, just can't wait until the 20th. So he's trying to make, you know, various content, trying to, like, call me out and stuff. But Okay. Um, is it working? Is he doing something? Is it working? Like, because no. it depends on how it is. Like, is he getting a lot of views? Like, because Cat Williams got 24 million views in Listen, about two to three days two or three he days. absolutely is no cat williams by a long shot so th this is this is the context of uh -huh. this because when it comes to battle rap i only am interested in battle rap so much of just the performance okay where i don't care about this people like to do all the talking and stuff that up until the day of the battle so they'll make 30,000 like posts about you. They'll go on social media, you know, make their little content and blah, 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 blue, 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 blue. And they just keep going. So they attempted this uh, about a month ago. And I was like, I don't do this y'all. Like just show up, give me a good battle. Don't waste my time. Cause yeah, I don't do this. So I guess he and felt some type of wearing your favorite poncho. Uh, yes. Yes, I yes. am. I, I might have to show up right. that way. I really yeah. will. Like, I, I'm I'm looking for uh, I'm a cosplay as Lakeith Stanfield you and go. shoot this nigga in the face like <laughs> like go. the water ain't fall but you know it's I don't know it's it's the thing with with social media and we're going to roll right into to Cat Williams with this because I I just feel like there's people who act for the role to get to where they want to be but they right. portray themselves as something as they're not and then you have someone like me who just says, you know what? I, I'm, I'm, I don't have time for this. This is what the real is. And then their response is so on and so forth. So there was a particular video that was made mainly because the league on to hit us up and was like, yo, we need some promo, but just like, I don't promo. Cause one, you're not paying me. First of all, not to promo. Then it's like, if I promo, who am I promoing to? And you want me to promo in a very specific group of people Who's already going to come to the event anyway? So like so, my come idea, on Dante, scare promo don't make no money. Come on now, I, make a I, damn I, promo. I, I I know that's what they want to say, and I know that's how they want to say it. But I'm just thinking, if I'm coming up here to give you to create a production for you, in front and behind the camera, I'm bringing the the equipment, the podcast stuff is coming up there with me. I'm I'm doing interviews and stuff. Don't see here and like I I think the promo should fall on you because I'm coming from North Carolina to New York. What am, is my promo in North Carolina going to do to bring in more you know heads in the in the venue in New York? 
because I come in, I'm coming to New York, sure, but like they don't know me in New York. Not like they know y'all in New York because y'all were there. So I think that will fall on y'all responsibility. But I know it's like, well, at least make a post or something. Make a post. Like I, I, I can, but why? <laughs> it's like I, I just don't understand, especially, especially because these people are not good. You're not better than Mike. All I'm going to say to that real fast, man, is that's where you have to elevate because you know okay. what the, you know what everyone else is going to start doing. They're going to turn on you. True. Like you're right. you're right now. You're the baby face. They like yo. We know when when Dante come through, he about to mop the floor with somebody, and that's cool. But when you start making it seem as if said promotion owes you something in return. They're going to make it seem as if, right? Because they 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 can easy easily make a narrative and make right. it seem as if, oh, you think you're bigger than said promotion? Who is you? That's true. What the blah 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 blah? And they can make all those. Think about it. They're not. They may not be as well put together as you. So they'll just group up on you. It's like Survivor. It's like, oh, he he the smartest. You know what? Let's let's now. Who y'all want to eliminate? The smartest one. Him over there. Yeah. Him. And that's what I it's think. looking like. That's what it's looking like. So you got to slow, like, slow down. You got to slow down. Like. You got to slow down. Like, it, it just. And get to another promotion. Uh, okay, fine. It's like, fine. My contract is done with AEW. Triple H, let's go. You know what I mean? You got to think like that. You got to be like Cody Rose, my man. You got to just be like, ah, you know what? It's think the contract that I wanted. Let me go somewhere else where now I'm the biggest baby face in pro wrestling. That's how you, you know, gotta look you're at absolutely it. right. Because that's that's, that's 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 what I feel is kind of happening right now with this particular with this particular group. Yeah, you're acting like Cat Williams that, oh, right now. Oh, you're not even yeah, getting the view. Yeah, I'm I'm you're acting, acting like, like that. Yeah. Yeah. And acting like Cat Williams. The dude who's trying to call me out, yeah, that's 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 the Steve Harvey Ricky Smiley. Like this is the Ricky Smiley. That I'm well, dealing no, no, he's with. Ricky Smiley because Steve Harvey would be a that, that would be like Charlie Clips. That's a whole nother level. True, mm, true. All right, but he, yeah. absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Rick, like I'm dealing with the Ricky Smiley yeah, you're in this with situation Ricky. where it's like you are in a position, but you're only in that position because there is no one else that wanted to be in that position, and you're trying to elevate yourself to make it seem like you're on my level. And that's not how the script was originally written because like, <laughs> you know, you know, I, I feel like one, I was very jealous. I felt like Mike Epps when it comes to that Cat Williams thing. But Mike Epps was <laughs> like, listen, just say my name. Just, my just name. mention my name. Just mention my name. I got, I, I got, I got a that. show coming up. Let me get some of that money. I'm kind of jealous, man. Like, let, let, me, <laughs> let me just get a little bit of shine there. But at the same right. time, it just, with everybody that has come out with, their responses. You notice everyone tried to take like the high road. I noticed that like everyone's trying to do the professional peace and love. Like, listen, nobody said, nigga, said, you lying. Nigga, you lying. Nobody said that. Not one person. He said, y'all got light skinned, ugly face wives, and y'all talk about some peace and love, grace and peace. I was like, no, no, no. I was like, listen, if y'all ain't trying to fire back, like, yeah, it, right. it makes me feel like, hmm, because nobody on, said he was lying. Yeah, it, it, and Ludacris it. even gave him a whole song. Ludacris gave him a Man. whole song, but not one time in that song did he say you lying. Come on now. L Ludacris did what uh, Rick Ross and Meek Mill did with that uh, Christian rapper dude when he was trying right. to call him out. And I hate that response. The response mm. is like, yo, you doing X, Y, Z, whatever, whatever, whatever. And your response is, look how much money I got. Look, look what I, you know, like. I did this. I drive this car. I'm wearing this watch. I'm iced out. And then I'm just I'm just like, why is that y'all go to response? Like it no yeah, we're not caring about how much money you got. At all. They are doing exactly what Drake has been doing in hip hop. They're drinking. <laughs> yes. I'm talking about yes. Steve Harvey, Steve Cedric the Entertainer. But but again, in this case, just because you drinking on a of course, on a uh competitive level, I'm looking at you kind of funny. Uh -huh. But on a business level, is you know what this? Hey, look, not a bad deal. I mean, why should I let the comedic stand-up version of TMZ try to ruin my day when you only your net worth is only two million? I'm Cedric the Entertainer. I am a national treasure right now. I'm Steve Harvey. I'm a national treasure right now. That's what do bad. I need to say? 
Matter of fact, you know what you just did? I get it. 24 million views, but it's not on your podcast. It's not on your platform. It's on Club Shay Shay's platform. So I pray to God that you have talked to Shannon Sharp, Hall of Fame legend tight end. Pause. I should have said that. I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to say pause. All right. You know what the position is. Yeah, Jesus yeah. Christ. It's, it's getting crazy. It's just getting crazy. I feel like I should just, I, should, I, I gotta say it right now. I ain't gonna say it. I'm gonna be a man about it. But listen, okay. okay. The point I'm making is that, you know what I'm saying? If you didn't cut no type of check with Shannon Sharp, then again, I, I'm not, I don't know how much like uh, good energy I should be giving you right now. Cause guess what? Unlike uh, Dave Chappelle, who is getting $20 million per special on Netflix, you only coming out once every six years. It ain't like Netflix is clamoring for you to make seven different specials and at $20 million a year. But guess what's going to happen? The same way my man Chris Rock just scored $45 million to air his, to air his grievances. You don't yep. think Cedric the Entertainer or Steve Harvey can't get 70 mil just to air you out, Ooh. whether they right or wrong? You just opened up the floodgates. And nobody didn't think about that except me, of course. But I just want you to understand that, Cat Williams, because what you did is fine, but you did it on somebody else's platform. And on top of that, it was type exaggerated. Sure, some people could take jokes, whatever the case may be. But you saying out loud that you have brought people on the road funnier than you. Who are they? Because I never heard of them. All right. That's number one. Number two. And I and I and, and you know what? I hope the trans community show me some love for this because I didn't. It took me two days to actually want to really say this to y'all, and y'all can y'all can follow up on this one. You know something? When he started talking about Ricky Smiley and all the other greats, Martin right. Lawrence and Jamie yeah. Foxx that was doing the cross dressing, Tyler Perry, right? You know, talking about the sucking on the, you know, we we know what's going on, right? I I don't want to get so much again politically into that. Right. Oh, I never be in the same. That's why you never see me in the same room with Kevin Hart ever. It's like, well, Kevin Hart just making more money on Netflix. Like, again, where are you at, Kat? Like, what are you talking about? Like, he's in a room full of money. I guess you just leaving. I don't understand. Mm -hmm. And then, on, well, so anyway, I'm sorry. Let me get back to the cross dressing point. OK, you want to say that's not cool. Fine. I'm not here to agree or disagree with that. But guess what, bro? Anytime you've been on national television, cartoons or sitcoms, you have been cosplaying a pimp, whether it's been on Wildin' Out, whether it was the Tracy Morgan show, whether it was right. the Boondocks. And no disrespect to anybody that think pimping ain't easy or pimping is cool. I don't think pimping is the greatest influence to my children. So you mm -hmm. can't hit me with none of that. This is the pot calling the kettle pimp. And that's just my personal <laughs> overall opinion about Cat Williams. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Because that's that's how you got to look at it. That's that's how you got to look at it. Where th there is another side to the coin. So with all this, where everyone's like, "Ooh, he really going at him." Okay, so what what does the other side look like? And this is what the other side looks like. It's like, all right, well, if we take now, okay, I understand you are. I am one of the you know the richest people in the world. I I, I never sold out this, never sold out that. I never put on the dress. I, you know, blah 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 blah. P Diddy likes to party, and you got to. Tell them no. Okay, cool. We get all that. But at the same time, now the way they're going into the archives, finding jokes that were stolen and this, that, and the third, now they're actually going to turn around and say, well, let's look at you. And this is what's also going to be found where it's just, all right, well, if Ricky Smiley is known for doing this, when we think of Cat Williams, yes, pimp. Pimp. And, you know, he tried to explain a little bit of that, but as far as career goes, pimp or old pimp or like former pimp like in Atlanta you know like, like alligator man that, that type of thing but you were still like the old crazy nigga that used to be you know so the now dude did a live stand up sketch show called Wildin' Out as a pimp point blank don't tell me he was a regular dude playing a, you know what I mean like no he was a pimp on Wildin' Out continue Dante I just want to put that out there I mean yeah. you're 100% correct though I mean because I even when you think about the definition of pimp, you doing whatever it takes to get the dollar. Even a pimp is a pimp and a pimp got girls that they pimping, but the pimp himself would do whatever he take, whatever it takes to get the dollar. So, um, yeah, whatever it takes, like 
that mean whatever. I mean, man, woman, whatever it means, whatever you got to do to get that dollar, a pimp going to go get that money. A real pimp going to go get that money. And a lot of people, yeah. I mean, just like you just said, they identify Cat Williams as a pimp. Like, they they legitly think you a real-life pimp. And even in one of his um conversations when he was getting interviewed, he talked about how he was raised in a Christian community. He talked about how he came for money. Talked about how his uncle and his family members was um, chief of police. Talked about how, um, but yet, even though he had the chief of police on his team and his people was in the church and he had cousins in them that was the biggest dope boys, he said he was hustling out on the street at 13 and was getting the hit on by men at 13, making money, sleeping on the street because he wanted to, to have a better life. So you've been hustling. But they don't know you to be that hustler. They know you to be defined as a pimp. And a pimp going to do anything strange for a piece of change. Well, you know what? Another thing that I really found strange, because when I was uh, looking into uh, just, I tried my best to unplug. I really did. I tried my best to just like, all right, I'm going to give us just a good time to just woosah. But at the same time, just let me just go back and just watch watch the old things but the 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 crazy thing that i saw did, did y'all did y'all see old dude in the las vegas thing where he like high jumped and vaulted over that bench to, to get at that jump? oh yeah <laughs> yeah that, that was impressive <laughs> that was very impressive because he cleared it he cleared it <laughs> that wasn't a cross body that was a cross buick you gotta put it out there man let's just say like what a yo Hey, now, nah, hey, the funny thing about it is she yeah, she moving ahead. all slow to get out the way. She see him coming. Yo, she, she, got, she she made eye contact with him and looked nah. at him like this. He still caught him. She wasn't Listen, expecting it. She, that was, she didn't that believe that, it was that was that deer, Yeah, that was that deer in the headlights. That was that deer in yeah. the headlight moment right there, man. She saw a Buick with Sable. She did not know it was going to go that fast. She did not know. <laughs> Man, I, I'm thinking of whatever she he did the phenomenal forearm on that man. It was springboard off the top row. It was it was crazy. I was like, yo, I, I was like, he missed his calling. He missed his calling. He he, he should be. Years. That was too many years. Yeah, you're right. He did. He did miss yeah. his calling. You're right. Yeah, like he he should he should be hurdling over dudes on the football field. He should be LeBron slam dunking. Fast break superstar on the basketball court. He missed his calling. He did. He did. Like because that, that was freakishly athletic. Like there's no way he cleared well, that entire bench. Hey Dante, the thing about it is though, he was mad because him try, <laughs> he trying to, to negotiate a murder charge. Look, I don't think I should go back <laughs> to jail um, because I'm at a better place in my life after you kill somebody, my boy. I think um, y'all well, should just give me probation. Was it a murder charge? Yeah, he was. It was a murder charge. Yeah, I think he was ex-murderer, oh. and he was but trying to tell it, her it was, he it was like, like, a, like he violated pro. Like it, okay, okay, he violated yeah. probation. Okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Okay, okay. And he he gave him her, thirty he years of probation, though. Dad, yo, that's because he had that. That's how much time they gave him. They gave him like thirty years. Yeah, that's why you went crazy like that. Yeah, I saw when they brought him back into the courtroom, and that that same judge was like, "No, I want to give the sentencing," and they had him looking like, <laughs> oh, "Yeah, uh, man, thirty years, man." Yeah, he had yeah, him he looking no like the shiny. Yourself. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's what you got lawyers for, yo. Come on now, you supposed to have lawyers. Your big, the OG of the of the gang was supposed to have big homie lawyer ready for you, so he or she could be doing all the talking. He had no business. Talking, no business. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the picture. I wish, but I like, nah. They had my man looking like here's Johnny. Like they had him looking like the Shining, bro. They, they had the face mask on him and everything. They had that man chained down. Like you will not get away this time. But you, you mentioned the lawyers. Nah, nah. Them lawyers said no. I'm out. I'm, I'm sure he had a public defender. So he's like, you know what? I'm just gonna call in this day. Y'all got it. That, that, that's nothing I can do with that. Nothing I can do with that. I'm out. Yeah. I mean, but still, you got security. And, you know, um, speaking of somebody who has been in those um, courtrooms, you got security right there. As soon as he stepped from behind the wood, they should have known something's about to go down. You're not supposed to leave that podium. Is it like somebody should have been tackling him the same way he tacked her? But, yeah, his um his original charge, Dante, I think he was going to get, like, 19 months or something like that. He was going to have for, a, like, a um, a battery charge. But then now he's yeah, getting charged with attempting murder for jumping on her. 
so yeah, so yeah, that's so that's what crazy. that's what it is now. Cause like, yo, they, they, but, they already gave him a crazy sentence of, of some years that he ain't think he deserves. So he he did the cross Buick. And here goes my thing about the security that was there. These are normal everyday people. This is why you better start hiring some people that be at the gym. Right. You better yeah, start right. doing that. Some people that they got some they got some testosterone, some estrogen. They want to go uh pump off and, into the air or something. You can't just no be hiring room. some normal schools every day. Now, I ain't no and court no room. Court room. Yeah, I mean, but that's how it is. No court room. No, my bad, my bad. I was gonna say they put if like let that be me. If I'm security, I would have caught him. You know what I'm saying? AEW style and put him in some Tiger Driver '95. <laughs> <laughs> had his neck on the floor. With a court. Yep. <laughs> you gotta yep. wild out. You gotta act up, man. You want that? You want that medal of honor from the president, man? I want. I want a whole. I want a whole podcast off what I did. I just body yes. slammed the whole nigga. Yep. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> yep. What well, I got ninety five thousand views off my first episode of my podcast. Yep. And, and, and you you be you be Cat Williams for real on your own stuff this time. Yes, right. On your own stuff. I, I I tell you what the real security was. The real security was down in Miami when they were seeing about the aliens. They were talking about they saw up in the mall. Y'all hear about? Oh. <laughs> Y'all hear oh. about that? Nah. Yeah, what's what's that about? What's that about? <laughs> they said they said over the weekend that yeah. there were aliens that were spotted. In the Miami Mall, they said oh. they were nine feet tall, and they, you know, this this crazy pandemonium, this whole sea of cops. I forgot the number, but it was a lot of cops that was up to the scene, and they said it was confiscating everybody's phone. But someone described they said they saw the alien. It was about nine feet tall, and I was like, "Racist! That's racist!" <laughs> Just because Shaq was in an alien outfit in Miami, y'all know that's his town. That's his he town. Was, yes, he was in Party City. Yeah, he was in Party City trying on some costumes, and y'all must thought this was. Come on man. now. But the funny thing is, because you know this is America, people believed it though. People like really believed that it was aliens in Miami. I was like, "There's no way." There's yeah, no way. that's because you had folk this. running. You had folk running, like legitly running from them, like like yes. legitly running. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> said legitly. <laughs> Legitly running. <laughs> Legitly running. <laughs> man, that, that was getting up out of there, man. But I, I just thought they were like, there is no way. There is no way. Like y'all really, really but you know, it, it is it is what it is. It is what it is. I I was um I saw it. Yeah. And I was uh just seeing the videos, of course you ain't got no video, no aliens, but and no. seeing people's testimony and stuff like that, and I was like, yo, you know what? Like and then the whole question of what do aliens exist? What you know? And then the whole conspiracy theories, the Area Fifty One stuff, and so on and so forth. I was like, yo, yo, okay, y'all got it, y'all got it, man. Yo, I'm, I'm a back on off, and I'm a let this cut pass from me. I don't even, I don't even want to get involved. If it is, then hey, let me ask y'all something. Let me ask y'all something real quick though, real quick about aliens. Do you guys believe in aliens as a way of showing humility? You know what? And if so, do you feel as though you're a hypocrite? If I believe that aliens exist as a way for men or, or humans to be humble? For humans to think that you're humble. Like, oh, that's so cool. And, you know, to think that there's just more people or more existing creatures other than you on this earth. I mean, or in this galaxy, in this stratosphere. Yeah. Not because of that, no. No, I, I I don't think you know for, for as a way to seem humble. I'm I'm not on that uh, that super liberal thing. Oh my, everyone has to exist. You know, I'm not on that tip. I feel like <laughs> I feel like if there is if there is you know um, extraterrestrial life, um, yeah. I think it is the understanding and the belief that we actually are not like the center of everything because we feel right. like we are it like we right. are it, it gets no higher it gets no better than us and then other people took that like well it gets no better than this type of us you know that so yeah. i i think that's that that will shatter that narrative which honestly you know i i would i lean towards the possibility of there being you know extraterrestrial life out there i'm i'm open to that possibility <laughs> i am seriously <laughs> I, I mean, but for real though, you do have a lot of extraterrestrial looking people, so <laughs> oh, y'all wilding. Y'all are wilding. See them often. See them often. I'll, this this is true. 
This not all true. babies are cute. This not all babies are cute. <laughs> <laughs> you see people, you see some people, people like, oh man. Oh yeah. man, you you do not know how to play cards well. You did not get <laughs> you, that yeah. hand you was dealt. Woo! Thought you had oh, Jesus, the heart. You got the hey. you got the, the the six of circles, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 what was that? What was that dark skin dude who came in at the end of high school? Um, like he was like shaped like a gorilla. Dark skin. What was his name oh, John God. or something like that? I I, I know exactly hey, what you're talking about. I, I think Look, it man, was this joker. John. This joker hands went down to his ankles. That's how big, long his arms were, for real. He, he, now he was he was relatively short. He was about our height, but yeah. he had some long like he had some long arms, bro. And like the big, but everybody used to like used this. to yeah, everybody used to to mess with him, man. So I, I I tried to befriend him until like he tried to snap at me for trying to be friendly. I was like, I what fucking do, nigga. <laughs> Hey, 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 true just, story. True story. Hey, it's silly though. Like I walked in the bathroom and I I didn't walk. I was in a wheelchair. So I wheelchaired to the bathroom one time. This joker is standing up at the cubicle. It, it, what you call him? Porty party, whatever you call him. With his pants all the way down to his ankles. With his pants all the way down to his ankles. Pin. He gonna look at me like this. Mind your business and leave me alone. I said, boy, this joke is stupid. <laughs> I said, this joke, this joke is, I, look, I done rolled back out. I said, man, y'all won't believe what I just yep. saw. Yeah, that joke is crazy. Roll out. That's crazy. Roll out. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, now, you know what? A, a very good thing happened just now. So I, you know, wifey didn't want to cook. You know, I'm doing the pies. I'm like, you know, we, we just going to order some, you know, DoorDash some food. You know, it's, you know what? We ain't have Kentucky Fried Chicken in a while. Let's go ahead and do Kentucky Fried Chicken. Well, you know, got some Kentucky Fried Chicken DoorDash, and they made the cardinal sin. One of the items that we ordered was not in the bag. So I'm about to get oh. my whole refund. I love it when yeah. that happens. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. Free chicken. <laughs> yeah, you the only person I know. You, 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 that's you. You that you that level of petty. But you, but you got to be like that when it comes to DoorDash, though. Yes. Oh, you, yes. you messed up my. You messed up my order. Oh no, this 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 dish is free. Everything is free. Mm -hmm. This whole forty dollar no cent existence is free now. No problem. Yep. And if you keep disrespecting me, the next two gonna be on, on you guys too. Yep. Exactly. I feel so, you on that. I feel you on that. Know. None of the above. I, I I love doing that. I I love doing that because I we were doing it so much. We say, you know what? We're we're going to go ahead and get the premium. We're going to go ahead and get the you know DoorDash Pro or whatever it's called. You get we that do it so much. Get that month subscription. Yeah. So like we do it so much, and honestly, it saves us money because we use it so much. So we, we get a yeah. bang for our buck. But at the same time, it's just like, and this isn't necessarily the Dash's fault. It's the people who who prepare the the bags and stuff, but no, you know what? I'm gonna get my forty six dollars back, baby. <laughs> I'm gonna that's get it back. That's how you know he got a family, yo. Exactly. Forty six dollars exactly. on the DoorDash is crazy, yep. dog. Yep. Like for forty six dollars on a Thursday, and it's not at a bar is wild, yo. Like you see yo, what I'm saying? Man. Like let me, cause I yeah, listen. My my DoorDash bill be eighteen forty nine. You know what I'm saying? You know I'm single. You know, yeah, but, you know about myself because it, it's it's getting <laughs> to the point, especially now. But 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 it's but it's only going to get worse for me because now you know my kids got personalities and different characteristics and yeah, likes yeah. and dislikes. So you know, uh, we can't do Bojangles because my daughter doesn't like the the, the spicier food. Spicy chicken, and, right? and yeah, you know, it's, you know, it's spicy for her. But then you know, my my son doesn't like like. The mashed potatoes and stuff from Kentucky Fried Chicken. It's so it's just it's weird. And so then now, my daughter, because she thinks she's grown now, she only eight. She only eight. Right. But now we go we go out and stuff, and then she thinks she want to order for herself. But I want this, this, and this Gr grown adult meals and stuff. Now, uh, not when you were eight years old. Uh, uh you better get this kid's chicken tender meal. <laughs> go right. home somewhere. No, no, no ma'am. Right. No, big off no chicken tender. Go ahead, yeah, little daughter. Nah. No, 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 no. Stop playing. No. Stop playing. <laughs> That's right. Get you an extra apple slice. That's right. <laughs> what you gonna and, get? And a milk. There you go. <laughs> celery. Yeah. Stop playing. Stop, stop, yeah, stop playing. What you, <laughs> yes. Yes. You, you need your vegetables. You, you need to eat your vegetables anyway. Like, stop playing. Stop playing. But, man, 
All right. So um everyone is talking about and I'm I'm <sighs> this had to be in North Carolina. It just had to be in North Carolina. And in in my backyard too, because this happened in Raleigh. But like the old girl that accused the dude of giving him giving her HIV that ended up being it. fake. What? Yeah. What? Yes. What? Yes. So th- this is the timeline. This has been going on for about a week now. About a week but, ago. Mm-hmm. So this happened at St. Aug University in Raleigh, North Carolina, like literally the backyard. I'm like, oh, why here? Why here? So now St. Augustine, you know, just fun fact for those who know about the area that used to be an, um, an all girl college, I believe. Um, and then it's now co-ed. I could be wrong. I think actually I'm thinking about peace, but anyway, there's this okay. old girl. She goes on social media and she just blasts her ex-boyfriend name, everything. And oh. and said that oh he gave me HIV y'all beware of this man he's no good he's you know horrible I can't believe he did this to me this is his mm. name this is his address this is where mm. he lives and all his personal information up on social oh. media so people mm. rallied to her defense and they they come at this dude I mean kicking his back in and. Oh. And coming at him, sending threats and stuff, and he had to pull out of classes and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And, and so she tried to substantiate this claim by putting up a putting up text messages, allegedly of the interaction. Him like, yo, I'm sorry, I've had it about seven months. I didn't mean to hurt you. We'll figure it out. Blah 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 blah. And like this dude is catching hell. Mm. Come to find out, it was all fake. It was a lie, and it was found out that the text message conversation that she posted was her texting herself and mm. Mm. and now this man moved out of school and he had to get out of school and stuff like this and and people you know thinking they're doing the right thing uh basically ruined this man's life and just comes to find out that this was all fake uh and it wasn't true at all it was just there was a breakup she got mad and she wanted to nah. do something Nah. to him and this is nope. what she did um, now we we ain't never gonna make it feel like it's okay to i mean people gonna lie when people get hurt they gonna tell their lies they gonna tell their ch- side of the story and try to highlight the things that the other person did and never really tell the full story of what they did to get to that point but something like this uh-huh. we talking about like God, come on america come on come on my state come on north carolina like yes. we we really gonna first of all you could tell me something happened and I'm not going to run to your aid without knowing specifics. And I know they probably looking at it like, this is heinous. I can't believe he did this. I can't believe he did that. But y'all never asked, what did she do? Regardless of what she talking about. Like, you're not pulling up on nobody for a breakup. We're not pulling up on nobody because they got an issue with you because people will tell lies. I'm a victim of that. Um, you may not like that we're not together no more. You may not like how our relationship went, but don't go telling lies. And we talking about something like this. HIV, that's a tip of the murder. You know what I mean? Like, we're not going to yeah. sit here and act like that. That's okay. Like, I feel like knowing that now, she should be prosecuted. Um, Like, no less than 10 years. Like, y'all can get mad at me, say what you want. I still don't, you know, or at least get her tail beat. But she need to get, she need to get hands, feet, paws, elbows, and toes put on her. <laughs> and, um, and this is a man of God telling you that, you know, I'm telling you that. I forgive you, woman. But, yeah, you got to be, you got to. We talking about being justified. If we're going into, we're gonna go back to those Bible days since y'all women want to act up. We're gonna go back to those Bible days, you know, eye for eye, two for two, hand for hand. But since you want to act up, yeah, come on now. We we not we're not gonna make you feel like it's okay. I don't know your name, woman. When I get off here, I will look you up because you need help and somebody need to yeah. come see about you. I got I, I got some but girls that, in Shelby there to come ask. see about you. For real. Oh, please. Yeah, not, not them shell town girls. Oh, no, no, not, not them shell town <laughs> girls. Crazy. But this is why I want to ask y'all because you mentioned, you mentioned it because now the conversation has shifted. Um, well, one, it, it teaches everyone a lesson. It's a lesson that I learned a long time ago. Just so much. You can't just jump to a side. You got to get information. You got to know what's right. going on. I, I understand it's, you know, your people's side versus everybody. I get that. You know, loyalty and da 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 da. especially in in the black community. You know, that's like uh-huh. loyalty and all this type of stuff is is like our thing. I get that. I true. But at, the, at the same time, no, I need information. You my man's. You know, and I I, I will ride or die for you because you my man's, and that's you know my family, all that type of stuff. But at the same time, I'm still gonna need some information. 
I'm still going to need to know, like, what's going on. So I, I, I just wonder, now, should anything happen, should something happen to this girl who did this? What happened to that woman that lied about the baby being kidnapped and was gone for two, three days and then came back home because she had to get back to her nursing job or whatever she was doing? Carly, Carly Russell? Yeah, yeah, that's just. Uh, let's let's see. Did she I ever go to jail or, or probation or anything or or, or at least get an I'm, arraignment? I'm, I'm looking it up on? right let's, now. Let's look that up real uh, fast because because this is giving me this type of vibe, but on a whole nother level. Because realistically, you could have just had a bunch of people at that per, a bunch of people protesters at this man's apartment or home wherever he was at that man's yep. address. It could have been wild and picket fence style going off on him, and all of a sudden it's a lot. Yeah, you know I mean. Um, you know what, brother? I don't know who you. I don't know your name, but if I was you, just go ahead and claim this. Make sure you are on social media and and and, and, and let people know that you know this was a BS. And then you go ahead and create your podcast. These bitches be oh wait, these bitches be bringing up old shit podcast starring your name. You know what I'm saying? This uh -huh. is what you need to be doing. Just go ahead and start your business, bro. Get the LLC going again. These bitches be bringing up old shit podcast starring your name, LLC that. You know what I mean? And just go ahead. Get this money. Yep. That's well, all I can tell here's you. Here's what happened to Carly Russell. She she was, uh, a guilty verdict was handed down by, I'm just going to read this little article by the judge. Uh, she was facing a year in jail. Now, to these charges of all the charges that she did. Uh, falsely reporting an incident, faking a kidnapping, false abduction, and da 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 da. She pleaded not guilty to this. <laughs> she pleaded not guilty. <laughs> so she still didn't take no responsibility for it. But but she was found guilty, and they they recommended or was going to send her to one year in jail and eighteen thousand dollars in restitution. Uh, and but she's currently appealing this sentencing. So okay. th this was as of October. Send us to a year in jail, but she's appealing th th the the decision now. I mean, you could definitely put this other sister in here for five years or 10 years, like uh, P. Shaw said, regarding this, because like you said, you you basically saying someone is uh doing attempted murder out here on these streets. Yeah. They, yes. doing, they doing biochemical warfare out here on you. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, you... Pfft. And then I'm to just, lie about that? Yeah, yeah. I I'm just going to be honest. I'm just going to really be honest. I think she absolutely should be made an example of. I'm just going to be honest because I think this will stop a lot of stuff that women do that they know that they will get the benefit of the doubt of and ruin a person's life just for the fact that you were scoring whatever, whatever may have happened. Honestly, well, I'm not going to say I don't care what happened because then that just opens up a spectrum of what could have possibly yeah. happened. Yeah, don't be, so I have an idea because yeah. I want to I want to get off this woman thing for a second because I feel as yes. though when three men start talking about how women need to feel the pain for, for about 18 yeah. minutes, you're going to be like, hey, yo, see, these three guys is ridiculous. So That's true. let me yeah. ask you guys something real fast. Let me ask you all something for real. Remember back in the day when your boys would lie on the dick, pause, you know what I'm saying, saying that they uh -huh. had sex with this woman? But they didn't though. What would be the punishment for him, in your opinion? What's the punishment? Mm. Let's talk about it. What's the punishment? That, that, that is that is a good a good. Uno what is, what is right the punishment there? for that? So let's yep. say you on you on the internet and you like me and Veronica made love and it was awesome like they did on Inca Man and all that and they come yep. to find out that you ain't do nothing with Veronica. First of all, it wasn't even name was Victor. You just did a whole other thing. It was going crazy, but it's not our business. But I'm just saying. <laughs> It's no, not but true. Like, <laughs> it's just not true. What's the punishment for the crime? Talk to me, fellas. You know what? You know what? I, I don't know exactly what what it is, but yeah, you you got you gotta be accountable for that. If you lying on the dick and you lying about these things, because you know that's what men do. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Something mm -hmm. should happen. I I, mm -hmm. I don't know. I I honestly I, I think for in integrity's sake. A year in jail. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> said, a year in jail for lying on the booty. A, a year in jail. A year in jail. If you lying on the dick, 
If you're lying on a dick that, that, that tells me you, you have character deficiency, you don't know how to take responsibility <laughs> for your actions, you are not willing to work and do the job to be able to actually make these claims to this seal the sad. deal and whatever so the why? case may be. Because you can't do it. You don't have the listen, skills. We're going to put you 12 months. I mean, 12 months I, mean, I, did, I mean, if I did the hoochie booty with her, <laughs> but I did finger her. Smell it. Smell it. I did. Oh, I, did. I, I did. I did. I did. I uh did. -uh. <laughs> Hey, look, yeah, look I will say this. I'm gonna say this to Nas though. Nas, yeah. I, you know, after doing research, um, uh, I'll tell you, I, I'm thankfully, I'm glad. I don't know. I think the girl is from Jersey. Yes, we dodged this one. I knew there wasn't no North Carolina chick acting like that. She is from Jersey. She is, is she from? Jer she is from New Jersey. What part? She's, what part? Please, please let me know. Please let me know. The city. Irv Irvington. <gasps> okay. Oh here. my God, that's right next door to me. That's Ir here. what? That's Hold Hitchin Town. Are you crazy? Hold Hey, hold on, no. hold on. I'm, I'm about oh, to, show, I'm about to show the screen. I'm hey, showing yo, the screen. That candy girls, please. Oh, yeah. Oh. I'm showing. I'm showing the screen. Oh, All right. No. So this is the girl. All right. Jonathan Hankler's name with HIV test results after bitter girl he talked to for four weeks fabricated four weeks. fake sex meant to falsely accuse him. Accuse him of having HIV. They, they only dated for a month. They dated a for a month. month. Oh. Nadine Monica Pachette. Pachette? They said, she said of Raleigh, North Carolina. It says of Raleigh, North Carolina. Created fabricated text message and falsely accused her ex-boyfriend, Jonathan Haynes, of having HIV and transmitted it to her. She created a new contact in her phone and used Jonathan's phone number as the name of the contact to create the fake text. <laughs> oh, man. They called her a thought scorned. But this, this wasn't Raleigh, North Carolina at St. At St. Aug University. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Um, she she crazy. Time out, time 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 out. She took uh he took her virginity for weeks. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But then but then yeah. but then but then her friends in Jersey said she got around. That's what she said. She she did say that did she that, that he took her virginity. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man. Listen, um, man. I need to know the city. Y'all gonna claim Jersey? Y'all gotta give me the city. I can let you know whether it was super <laughs> true or not. That's the yeah. urban so. If it's Irvington, it's, that, that is that is fair. I look, I'm really, I can I defer. <laughs> this article that. said that that Nadine was was mentally challenged. Okay. <laughs> yeah, was, hey, but for real though, look, but, but pay attention to the results. All she said was, so, "I'm sorry, I apologize." Come on, that's it. Come on now, arrest that woman. Arrest her. Oh, man. That's yeah, funny. Oh, in her right mind, they need to see if it's causing her to, to be publicly called out for falsely accusing a black man in college trying to pursue education and build a system. However, this parking lot thought from the bootlegger wanted to be called Rachel when her actual name was Nadine. Uh, she claimed that she was a virgin and that Jonathan took her virginity. However, according to friends from Irvington, New Jersey, who knows Nadine personally, says that she got around. Um... <laughs> That just say her it's friends. It didn't say that she was. She herself she was, was from. Yeah, it said from, her friends. Yeah, it didn't say she herself mm. was from Urbanton, New Jersey. Dog, okay, um, okay. But Dosh okay, one, Dosh, Dosh one. I mean, she, listen, man, they they all over the place. So it don't matter what yeah, state, you know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, yeah that's, this, this, that's, that's true. That's true. This is just terrible, though. But like, but I don't but you know, know what? I think this okay. It's not okay. But I'm gonna tell you what, gentlemen, just just hear me out on this. Hear me out on this. Our Tubi movie can be called He Gave Me HIV, but not really. <laughs> we can do this story. We can do this story. Yeah. We can do this yeah. story. Yeah. Th th this is our Tubi movie right here. You so see, see, God did. Prequel, huh? <laughs> we got kids the prequel on here. Yo, you <laughs> funny as hell. I'm with it though. Let's go. <laughs> like, I'm just saying. This is us. We got it. This is it. We gonna be first. Why you tell I gave you AIDS? You little, <laughs> you lying bitch. I'm about to kill you. <laughs> listen, and I'm right here in Raleigh. Listen, one weekend. That's all. That's all. All we need oh, is just, just tw twenty minutes. Just run the say dog. We just run with the camera, shoot a couple scenes, and we, we we listen. This is it. This is it, bro. This is it. I'm telling you. She's at the Romano Hotel in Parsippany, New Jersey. Well, let me tell you something, Officer Johnson. You better find her before I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to kill this bitch. <laughs> oh, my God.
bitch. That is Brenda, hilarious. Brenda, you went on X Twitter and told everybody I gave you AIDS. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> The way that microphone sound when you hit it though was hilarious. Right, That's right, the sound right. effect that we gonna need. But you get yeah. through. <laughs> that is like, hilarious. Yeah, that girl head heavy as hell. God oh, damn. Oh man. Hey, my Keisha. So to to keep this in in to be form, you know, since you know uh, Tory Lanez was Corey Gaines in their movie, so Nadine <laughs> will just change the name to like Trading or something like that. Mm. Um. Daneen or something like that. Just something silly. And Daphne. Jonathan Haynes is yeah. <laughs> Jonathan Haynes is um Jonathan Payne or something like that, you know. <laughs> Major Jonathan. Major <laughs> <laughs> That's his name, Major Jonathan. Yep, Major right to Jonathan. Yeah. You're right That's to his it. name. And, then, yep. and we replay the car scene. All we gonna see is the, 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 the phone getting took from him, and then I want I want the Bugs Bunny uh cartoon on black. Like, yep. <laughs> 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 and you know and, that's what I want. Then when you know run. That there, because I'm oh, coming yeah. in here like I'm gonna be major Jonathan. I'm being there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And when it's time to run away, we're gonna play that, that cartoon, that, that that cartoon sound effect. You know, before they get to running. Yep, yeah, I'm yeah. on it, man. Let's, these ideas are coming. We are on it. To be oh, here, we man. come. We about to, we in there. We done found our yeah. big break. <laughs> found our big break. I'm gonna now, get some bed sheets and look something like Shadobi too. <laughs> I had some Walmart bed sheets. <laughs> <Tied up. laughs> with, a, with a big ass lamp shade as, as your as your hat. I mean, it looking like Raiden. I mean, it looking yep. like Raiden from Mortal yep. Kombat. Looking like Raiden. Like nigga, the ramen is across the street. Where is you going? <laughs> what, is, what is happening right now? What is happening? That is hilarious. That is hilarious. Oh. Y- y- y'all hear about the Underground Railroad in uh, the-, the the Jewish Underground Railroad? First of all, that's Harriet. That's Harriet at NYC I- on 34th. We know what that place is, all right? And it's the PATH train. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't know about no Jewish Underground Railroad. We talking about? Don't be. Stop. Listen. Listen. They already stole hip hop, all right? We can't be letting them steal Harriet shit, too. This ain't nice. What are you talking about? Listen. They were fighting those cops. They were fighting those cops over this. Like, nah, this is ours. For, for those who don't know what we're talking about, there was a I'm, I'm gonna read this I'm gonna read this little thing here. There was a whole like system tunnel system under New York City that was that was connecting all of the Jewish uh what do you call them synagogue? I was about to call them mosque because I know that is absolutely like blasphemous. Temple, temple um, synagogue. Temple churches. But yeah, I would just I, at first my initial thought was why are we surprised? Like I'm not surprised, but I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there because we, we trying to we trying to get on the up and up. But yeah, there was a a whole system, and and they were like fighting to defend it, and it only was discovered because while they was moving through these tunnels, someone like heard them in the walls type of thing, and so they reported. You know what? It. You you I, I like your energy right now. You know what? Let's. I want to I want to give a compliment to the Jewish uh, community too. Shout out to the Jews for getting the reparations in America. Yes. Congratulations. Yep. Congratulations to you. Yep. Yeah. Shout, right. shout out. Absolutely. Salute. Shout out to you. Respect. It. It was. I could only. I could only pray that we get the same. We, we're mm. still trying. We just need some of y'all community to stop standing in the way. All right. So. Uh. That. That's all. It was. It was just funny to me. I wasn't surprised that. There was this whole. System. That's why the Jews can't never be on stand up comedy because I destroyed them one day in an underground comedy battle back in Detroit in 1998. I told them Jews about themselves and they couldn't even resist themselves no more. <laughs> you would never see Jews and me in the same building making Bodies money together ever in your life. I would never ever do it. All right. They always talk about some. My own, my net worth is only two million. Nigga, you don't know how much money I made on the road, nigga. I'm a black man. Ain't, ain't nobody can ever count the money that I made over here. Let me tell you something. 
I could, I could run a four point three one four in a pool, nigga, with a dolphin chasing me, nigga. What you talking about? I am, I'm God sin, my nigga. I was four months years old, and I put a speech out in front of ten thousand niggas. Let me tell you something, Shannon. I read four thousand books before I came here, and I only had three hours to do it, nigga. I am special. I made 10 kids with two women, all right? <laughs> We're talking about I'm gay, nigga. I am tired, all right? And then I didn't put, put my seeds out on all these farm fields, nigga. Yeah, I'm tired of the I'm tired of all the, the things y'all said about me. Talking about I was on drugs. I wasn't on drugs. I let Kevin Hart get my position, all right? He ain't the only short nigga that's funny. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, so oh, our next to be movie. It's going to be. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. It's going to be. <laughs> I'm the funniest short nigga of them all. Hey, yo, chill. Chill. <laughs> yeah, I'm not starring in that. And I don't, I don't appreciate the jokes. You better call Jonathan Majors for that nigga. I, I, I heard I heard he been looking for some work lately. You better call Jonathan Majors. Not even Major John. <laughs> You better call Jonathan Majors for that. <laughs> the Jonathan Majors, not just the Jonathan, Jonathan Majors. <laughs> the Jonathan Majors. <laughs> trying to be funny. <laughs> but that's a dope movie title. I'm telling y'all, we, we, we in there. I'm telling y'all. See, and y'all want me I to promote with these lame ass battle Grant rap City, niggas? City, he can never battle rap again. Because I came on stage out of nowhere and say, nigga, you try to put me on blast and say I'm the shortest nigga that think he funny, nigga. I don't even... I'm just a I'm a I'm a I'm a fake journalist from Newark, nigga. I just trying to get this I just want to work on New can, 12, New Jersey, baby, before it's all over. We can do it. I promise. The only thing we'll do, very little cosmetic stuff. We'll 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 give you the uh the whole look. I promise. You will murder that role. I promise. I promise. I promise. And that movie title is dope. That's crazy. I have That's to get dope. deep into my character. I have to, you know what I'm saying? Yes. The, the things that Dave Chappelle been talking about with Jim yep. Carrey. Now I'm going to yep. be near. I'm going to have KT paint my nails so Saucy Montana could like it, right? And he just get 15,000 of his people. Be crazy right now. I ain't doing all that. You better get on my face. I, I'll, I'll slap the shit you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something, because all them guys had to wear dresses in order to get on. Not me, baby. I had to. All I had to do was put put gel in my hand and talk like Bishop Don Juan. And and, and, and all I got was three opportunities in America. Now I'm mad. And now I'm TMZ. I'm going to tell you the truth. Everybody done took half of my jokes, but uh. I, I took theirs too, and, and, and we all we all we all making money, but but I'm gonna tell it first because y'all y'all believe me because I'm a pimp. There you go. <laughs> he said, "You associate yourself with losers, and that's not like." <laughs> <laughs> yo, when he said he had yo, when he told me he said he had he had comedians funny than him on the road. I said, "Please, I need the names." Like, cause where are they right now? Who are where they? Where are they? Where Who are, are they? they? Yes, yes, let me know. <laughs> but he did run that four four. Man, he wasn't playing. He hey, wasn't listen, that four four. Yeah, I mean, then they were showing the, the the his little running clip in that Atlanta show, and they're like, "Oh, so he does his own stunts." All right, cool. All right, great. Oh man, great. <laughs> great. He does his own stunts. Oh, you know what? Even in first Sunday, he was kind of like a church pimp, wasn't he? Not yeah. like yo, he, he 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 was that stereotypical, like that slightly feminine church praise leader, choir director. Nope, that's what he did. I'm just yep. saying. Come on, cat. But I said he said he 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 says he has range though. He has range. That's what he said. I mean, this. Listen, I've I've definitely seen no three or four different looking pimps. like Mr. Potato Head. That's, that's, that's I've seen saying. four or five different pimps in my day. I mean, you got the Mac, right? You got Goldie. Mm -hmm. You got all those pimps that was in Black Dynamite. Yep. You got the pimp that was in I'm Gonna Get You Sucker. Yep. Of course, you got uh Iceberg Slim and Magic Bishop Don Juan. You got all the pimps that was on the Pimps Holes documentary on HBO. So it's like it's different versions. You got the haters. You know, the ones that Dave Chappelle and Patrick O'Neill yep. put together, you know, hey, yep. hey, 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 mm -hmm. you know. So I don't know. You got different versions of, of, of pimps. So, so I, I guess you have range in this one profession. <laughs> I guess. Dave Chappelle said Rosie O'Donnell looked like she wore underwear with dick holes in them. <laughs> <laughs>
Ah, that was one of my favorite segments. Like they were some yeah. idiots, man. They were some idiots, man. It's like these stupid ass battle rap niggas. They, they keep trying to tag me, thinking y'all going to bait me into getting into a in an, uh, like. Yo, I'm man, gonna... why don't you just start cutting promos on your opponents? Cut promos. Do this like WWE, man. We all love a good CM Punk promo, man. Just True. put a promo out. But I did one. I, I, I did one. I did one. I'll, I'll show. I'll show it to y'all. I'll shoot y'all the link. What did I'll you shoot say? y'all. I hope you ain't be like, "Hey, this is Dante of the Talk My Credo podcast," and I'm coming for your little punk ass. Well, I swear to goodness. Well, no, I I did this. <laughs> I did this in a way where I followed the theme of 2024. Like I'm just going to tell the truth. I, I don't. I don't. I'm just going to tell the truth. And I just told the truth. And I was just like, "Well," and I went through. This was before we we did this recording. I yeah. pulled up his little video that he did about me, and I just went through it and dissected it. Yeah, I need I need to see this. I need to see this link because I, I feel as though you you should have said it. everything you're saying. I, I just I just put it all in my mind, and I just and I just like reset it for you right now because you're supposed to have been like, listen, let me tell you something, champ. You may wear the belt on your waist, but the people around here, the people that's even in the back. The fans, they see me as the champion. Everyone knows I'm the champion. Ask everybody right now. Ask them. They won't say it's you. The champ They'll say it's me, the righteous killer, Dante Credo. Mm-hmm. And on January 20th, Queens, New York, I'm going to show everybody why wow. I am the champion. The champ is here. I earned this. I took this from you. Your heart beats in my hand now. You fool. Be prepared. January 20th, the righteous killer is coming to kill you. You need that. That's it. You, you, Run it you're down. Right. Right. I, I, I was a little bit too, um, yeah, I, I. And then on the side, God, God got me in stores right now. Go ahead and follow my man. Yeah. Hey, hey. Yes. There you, go. you know, I, um, I broke the fourth wall. With 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 my response to him, because like I said, I just broke down his little his stuff, and then I just talked reality. I was like, I know this is WWE for you, but let let me show you the reality that I live in, and then I just kind of broke the fourth wall. So I'm Let's I'm gonna try to find the way because I will play it, but it's it's a little long. It's about sixteen minutes, and I ain't trying to go. I ain't trying to go for for that for that for that long. Not right now. We're well into it, and I just love this episode, and I'm not going to sour it giving him any type of light or credit or anything because he still would, would not be named <laughs> he won't be named I just don't I don't respect these niggas like that um, but there's other and I do this because in contrast there's other opportunities that I'm having that are coming up in the plate that I am actually excited for because these are like these are killers these are the killers these are the ones where I'm like nah I gotta be on 10 for this one, but it ain't none of this WWE stuff. I ain't got to worry about them. I ain't got to worry about opening up my Facebook and got 13 notifications because this one dude keep making posts and mention me and all this crazy stuff. I know that when their numbers call, they just going to show up to kill. They ain't got all this extra, extra stuff. And they make numbers like they, they do numbers because their work speak for them. And like that circle, like yeah, I'm I'm so I'm I'm gonna get past this. I'm gonna get past it. Now, I'm gonna whoop your ass. Now it ain't like I'm I'm gonna come there and just mail something in. I'm gonna whoop your ass. But you know I'm I'm focused on I'm finally getting in the ring with killers. Like if I'm not on my A game, I could die. Like they're that good. Mm. And like those are the fights that I've been wanting. Like I want killers because I'm tired of just it's the criticism people have of me is the fact that they they say that well. You're you're in Dave Chappelle's terms, you're punching down. Like you're you're going against talent who you know is inferior to you talent wise. Good people, great people, cool people, we ha ha he he, but when it comes to the ability, it's like, no, clearly you're better. So why don't you face someone that's just as good? And I'm like, I've been trying to do that, but I found a situation. I got involved with um with some people, but I had to do all that coming home. Like it's right here, uh, in the Durham area. Uh, but he has a really good connection to some really good, uh, 
like the platforms. It's like, hey, I can get these people down here. And like, hey, I got two set up and they said they actually would wouldn't mind killing you. Cool. That's what I want. That's what I want Whoa. right there. So Whoa, they they, right. they done told you they want somebody to assassinate you. Yeah. Okay. Because well, you need to find, for me, you, yeah, set that up. I'm okay. Yeah, but it's like the narrative here as far as battle rap, like my battle rap career has always been on the road. Because, right. you know, honestly, I tried to get started. Obviously, locally, uh, but it was politics and stuff where I just could not get a shot when I was first, you know, getting into battle rap. They just wouldn't give me a chance uh, for whatever reason. I would try out, would go through that process. They just wouldn't give me a chance. So I just called my own shot. These other leagues in Milwaukee and Minnesota uh, and uh Mississippi and Arkansas and up in New York. Like this is like my seventh time going to New York uh, for this league, but they were the ones that gave me the shot. So my first 12 battles or so, I'm not in your state. Right. Yeah. Like it wasn't until like my 17th, 18th battle where I actually got a battle in North Carolina, but that was because I got, uh, I started working with a guy who literally created a league for me. Like, he created a whole league, off the grid battle league. He created a group, a whole battle league for me, because um, I met him in New York, and he was like, "Hey, I'm coming to North. I'm moving to North Carolina." I'm like, "Bet." It's like I'm actually was thinking about, you know, starting my own league because I'm honestly I'm tired of traveling everywhere just to battle. He started a league. That league started making some noise, and now everyone's like, "Oh, let's see what this credo dude's about." Every everybody thought I was from New York. I would show up to these events like in Winston-Salem. They'd be like, oh, what you doing down here? I was like, I live here. I'm only 40 minutes away. And they'd be like, I didn't even yeah. know you lived in, in Carolina. Like you all over the place so much. Like, yeah. So it, it's, it's that. It's that. So I'm going to take care of business, I promise. And I'm going to show y'all this this promo. I'm trying to find a good way to, to show y'all. But I'm, I'm going to put it in the WhatsApp. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to upload it and put it in the WhatsApp. And let y'all watch his video and then my response to it. And then, and then you'll see, and then, then, then I can get your, crit your critique, but uh, I'm, I'm also feeling like this may be my last year in battle rap, honestly, just because I really want to focus uh, just the time on this. Cause again, I, I want this to go. I want this to go. And battle rap is cool. I love, I love the people that I met. All the type of stuff, but I just like I. It can go if you take yourself more seriously with battle rap because with battle rap you get more attention. Right now, bro, realistically, in my opinion, with any personality, when you're starting on this level of person or tax bracket, mm -hmm. you need whatever type of niche that can get you more followers. That's what happened with uh, what's the full critic guy that everyone talks about, Keith okay. Lee. Keith Lee, yeah, Keith that's Lee true. is known realistically for MMA. That's what he's yes. known for. That's true. And he just yeah, transitioned right. into something. You can be this battle rap guy that so happens to run a very good podcast. Well, I'm sorry, a good podcast. Yeah. But You're that's right. how that works because podcast is the bottom of the barrel of content because anybody and everybody can make one. It's almost free as hell if you don't want to get no equipment and just say, screw it, I'm going to just go ahead and do what I want, say what I want. And that usually yeah. works for people that are celebrities. But when you're the everyday person, huh, you got to be on the level of what Joe Button and Club Shay Shay already doing. So you got to make sure you invest in yourself. We already don't want to get into all that. You're right. I'm just making a right. point, though, that utilize battle rap and win in this, this arena so that people will come back and want to listen to your podcast. I wouldn't even look at it as quitting your last year. You not having even faced competition that's on your level. You 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 hurting yourself, in my mm -hmm. opinion. I'll shut up. You you right. You right. You are absolutely right. So, honestly, I didn't even think about it that way. I I. You right. You are absolutely right, and I I could create a different lane. See, that's why I gotta run stuff by y'all because that was my that was my belief. Like I think I'm I'm gonna have to give up. Well not give it up, but I, I'm just wanna 
I just want to stop it because I just felt like, you know, it's cool. I, I'm getting some of the battles that I like, um, that I'm really looking forward to. But overall, it's like I'm just not going to give the time or the commitment to people who I don't feel like should should need it. Because, like, for example, I do these things on the strength, especially when I make these trips. So it was like, and what they give me, it barely just covers the trip. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not right. even breaking even, but it's like, but I also know that, you know, y'all don't have too much, but at the same time, don't make these demands and expectations of me when you know that I'm doing things off the strength. You know what I'm saying? And a, a lot but, of things. Attitude, I've been, no, I'm sorry. My fault. My fault. But that attitude uh-huh. right there, which, all, which is all good. It makes yeah. you look like Ice Cube in higher learning before he graduated. Yeah. It's like, yo, you got all this potential. Actually, it's, it's actually solid. It's better than potential. But you rather just say, you know what? I'm going to just I'm gonna just do shits and giggles right here. If yeah. you feel as though personally that they should be doing more for you, right? But let's say they can't because they probably can't. That's okay. There's uh-huh. other battle rap leagues that's out here that can't. And you have the footage that would acknowledge that you should get a shot. As some of these other killers, but that's where that's on you, not on them. Right. Yep. That's true. That is true. I, I'm just I'm gonna have to get more, um, more business savvy, basically, just just more about the business of it, and and more strategic when I do things because for the most part, I just been doing things off the strength of it. Like I rock with you. You want me to do this? Okay. I'll 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 figure out. You, you want me to do A B C? I'll, I'll figure out how to, you know, I'll figure out the rest to to make whatever you ask of me happen. I need to be a bit more strategic. And that's what I need to really, really start doing. And, and that that's the lesson. Like, you shouldn't be lesson. having to be AV guy and battle rap champion and doing a podcast all in the same shit off the strength. Like, you're supposed to just yes. really realistically focusing on the battle rap. Yep. And after the battle rap is over, maybe... Just maybe I might put some content out. And I mean, if you Mm -hmm. was in the URL, think about this for a second. If you was in the URL, you already got your equipment set up. You could easily have post-game interviews with uh, Smrat all the time. All the time. Because you already got your own equipment. See, that's that's, and this is where you're the cutting edge. Me and you, personally, you know what I'm saying, compared to others. Because we're two black, black entrepreneurs that have our own equipment. So yep. it ain't like one of those, yeah, smack, you know what I'm saying? You know, we'll just hook up next week, you know what I'm saying? I'm about to studio out. It's like, yo, nah, we'll come to the hotel right now. We get this done. Like, you know, so I got yeah. the drinks and the women in the back. What's up? Oh, yeah. or whatever, yo. Drink. Just step step around the corner right here. Step, step around, around the corner. corner. We, 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 we got right everything here. set you know up right it's, here. Exactly. Yeah. This is what I'm oh. talking about. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's on demand for real. So I just want you to just take a moment and realize the advantages that you Dante Credo, the righteous killer have. Even with P. Shaw, myself, whoever the case may be, you got people that's willing to talk on back on your behalf and make something and, and put, you know, and, and connect these dots. True. Don't be afraid to utilize us. You feel me? But right. you right. gotta just know what the agenda is. Like I, I feel as though I know it for you, but you know, I, I can't talk for other people. I can't do that. True, <laughs> but I I feel like you are You are, I don't know how this is going to sound, but you, you get the interpretation. Like I may present it one, but you know exactly what it is. Like, oh, I know exactly what you need to do. And then you tell me what it is. I'd be like, yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. And, you know, I I think it is that just being like, no, I, I, I see what you're talking about, but, and you need, you need to do this. Then I'd be like. Yeah, that's exactly what I need to do. That's what I need. So to now do. we just need to execute it. That's what it sounds like. It sound and now like we just... need to execute. Yep, that's execute. that's what it yeah. is. That's what it is. So, so we definitely going we going to execute after I execute this nigga. And yeah, yeah. So like I said, I will be up there. Um, like I said, we'll be up there Friday. It'll probably be. Well, I think check it is. It's like three o'clock. So, but it'll be like early afternoon. Um after I'm allowed to check in and then we just going to cheer. I'll probably just have LJ with me. Okay. Um, so I'll probably just have him with me, but you know, he, he's, he's always down for a road trip. That's why I just like, let me just, I, right, I'm heading to New York to say bet. I'm like, what do you do with your free time? So I talked to him about that. <laughs> just like, he, he just be down to go, but that, that's, that's my bro. That's, that's my little bro, man. I, I love that dude. 
Um, but yeah, we'll be up there Friday and we'll probably head back, you know, sometime Sunday morning or something like that. And, yeah. um, but yeah, that, that's the plan. So listen, y'all, this is y'all. This, this is, this is the, the season premiere season three, episode one fifty one. It taught my credo podcast. We appreciate y'all. Y'all know what it is. We are back in this thing. Y'all be sure to holler at us. Let us know what you feel about it. Like, share, comment, subscribe, talk to us, leave that review, share it, share, share. Y'all know what it is. And we, we we are here. We are here and we back and we ready to get this thing going, get it moving to where I know that y'all believe where it should be and, and where we're going to to grind to get it there. So I'm 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 going to it's either, you know, it's it's like, you know, piss and get off the pot type of thing. You know what I'm saying? So it's like what what, what you gonna do? It's time to execute. Time to execute. Damn it, we gonna do that. So listen, it's your boy Nasu Nuru, peace y'all. Up in this thing. When when peace y'all finally get that that link to that merch, so y'all can go online and we're gonna go ahead and feature that merch and stuff. You know what I mean? So you know for those interview inquiries and all that type of stuff. Y'all y'all want to pull up or y'all need that dynamic personality to host your event and all that type of stuff. We we got not you know y'all understand y'all don't understand. There's a whole network we about to unleash on y'all. Y'all just don't know. Y'all don't know what we about to do. We about to unleash it all on y'all. Y'all know what's about to happen. But listen, y'all stay fly. Stay blessed. Till next time, peace out, y'all. The Talk by Credo Podcast. Hosted by Tante Credo. Dope discussions on society and culture. culture, culture. Find us on all streaming platforms. Oh, yeah. What's happening on social media. And subscribe to us on YouTube at Talk My Credo.